So in this video, we're looking at the long run steady state for Markov chains again. But instead of using transition matrices, we are now going to use a tech-free version, which will use some algebra, similar to when we did some Markov chains previously. Um, and then we created, derived some equations for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the two outcomes and we're going to have, let's say, A and B. We'll get a uh, certain equation with regards to A, certain equation with, with regards to B. Uh, Uh, for for example, this, and then we'll say that a plus b must equal a, a certain amount, such as one if, the pro if we're talking about probabilities or number of people, and then we can use simultaneous equations to solve these and therefore find the steady state. So it's easiest to explain this way through an example and then just go through each of the steps. So we'll do the example that we did previously as well. So it's the 100 students eat either curry or pizza at school. If they eat pizza the previous day, then 40% chance they'll eat pizza again, and 70% they'll eat pizza if they eat curry on the previous day. So we need to derive two equations. So we'll start off with pizza. So we're talking about pizza here. So pizza is equal to 0.4p plus... 0.7c. And the re how I got that is that for e every student that will p is a pizza. So if 100 students eat pizza, then 40% of those who eat pizza will eat pizza again. And that's why that's 0.4p. And then 70% of the people who eat curry will eat pizza later. So that's why it's 0.7c. Then conversely, when we look at curry, the curry has to equal 0.6p plus 0.3c. And you see that these two have to add up to 1. And that's because all of the people who eat pizza then have to do something. Uh, they have to either eat pizza or curry. We're assuming that everyone uh, who eats pizza the one day or curry one day has to then eat, do one of the outcomes the next day. So we have these two equations. Now we also know that this... So we get these, we have to derive to these two. And then the second thing we need to do is we need to derive this equation. So pizza plus curry must equal 100 student, 100. And that's because we're looking at the people here. So that's 100 students. That's where that comes from. Now, you, if it was probabilities, you would just let it equal 1. And we'll, just show, we'll show that in a sec. But we'll finish this example first. So now that we know, we'll take one of these equations. So we'll take this one, the p. So then we can go 1, so p equals 0.4p plus 0.7c. Take this to the other side and we get p minus 0.4p is equal to 0.7c and that's 0.6p is equal to 0.7c. Then we can get that p is equal to 0.7c on 0.6 and that's just equal to 7 on 6, or you can set, you can times the top and bottom by 10, and then we get 7c on 6. So we get p equals 7c on 6. Then we sub this into 2. So we, we, this is 1, so we've derived 1 down to here. Then we say sub 1 into 2. Uh, p equals 7c on 6. So we get 7c on 6 plus c is equal to 100. So we got 13c on 6 is equal to 100. So c is equal to 600 over 13. So that means 613 students in the long run will eat curry. We then sub this number back into 2 and we can work out pizza. The, the, in the long run, how many people eat pizza? So get rid of that. And then... Sub that back into 2, so we're going back to 2, we sub C in, we get the P plus 600 on 13 is equal to 1300 on 13, that's just 100, so P is equal to 713, and that's how many students. So if you had a calculator, so that's the exact answer, so that's the exact answer, but if it was the decimals, then these can be approximated. The, uh, the number of students 
where curry is equal, it's approximate to 46, and the number of pizza is approximate to 54, and see how these add up to 100. And you can see that in the previous example, we got the exact same answers. So this method will give you the same ones. The main thing is derive these two equations, make sure you write this one, and then solve for one of these to get one in terms of the other. So P in terms of C, one outcome in terms of the other outcome. Sub into two, sub it back into two, or you could sub it into one of these, but it could be a bit more complicated. And you can get the number of people who curry and the number of people who eat uh, pizza. Now, we could have done this, instead of equaling 100, we could just let it equal 1. If we let it equal 1, we would get the same. Uh, we would get, obviously, a different answer, but it would be an equivalent answer, just probability rather than uh, the number of people. So, we'll do that again, but these two equations remain the same, but now we'll say that P plus C must equal 1. So that is now our second equation. So we derive 1, and we already had that, and we said that P is equal to 7C on 6. Then we sub that in and we got the correct, uh, we got an answer. But now we want to sub that into 2. So when we sub that into 2, we get, so sub 1 into 2, and we have 7C uh, on 6 plus C is equal to 1. We get 13C on 6 is equal to 1. Therefore, C is equal to 6 on 13. Sub that back in and we get P is equal to 7 on 13. Add them two together and we get 1. So that's a good check. We'll check that. So C plus C, C plus P is equal to 1. That works. So that's good. So in the long run probability, we have that, which is approximate to 0 0.46, and that's approximate to 0 0.54. So we have the long run probabilities of eating curry and the long run probabilities of eating pizza. And that's the steady state. So once you reach that steady state, it's not going to change, and it will remain at those two amounts. Now, this relates to the first example, and that's because, if you remember back, that the expected number of people is equal to the number of people times the probability, so NP. Now, the number of people was equal to 100. We can times 100 by these probabilities, and we'll get 6 on 13 times 100 is equal to 600 on 13. Then we can find P, which is equal to 7 on 13, times that by 100, and we get 713. And you'll find that these are the same answers as we had before. And so you can see how the probabilities and the number of people relate. So with the number of people, it's the same as the probabilities, but we're basically just timesing most of our numbers by n. And from this, you can see that it doesn't matter what the initial uh, conditions are with regards to the number of people. It just matters what the total number is. It's because it's just like you can calculate the probabilities, which we've already shown the initial condition doesn't matter, and then we times by the total number. Yeah. So that's how you solve the steady state by hand.